There we go. I want to let you know that this morning we have some folks joining us in the church. So uh, Ken and Linda is here joining us. Uh, Aaron is here with us. And we have a special deacon this morning, Deacon Tom Lang is with us. So you, uh, you'll you see him, but you won't see, well, you won't see the other two except very briefly when they get their ashes. So I'm gonna let, I see more people are popping in. So I'm just gonna wait a couple seconds for people to get settled so that we can all start together. All right, Susan, can you mute yourself too? Thank you. All right, let us begin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you the God of all mercy perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we have the reading of the lessons. A reading from Isaiah. <clears throat> Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fastings as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks. This morning's Psalm is Psalm 103. Let's read it together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness 
and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for all those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like the flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The epistle today is taken from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is a day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have come ended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in inflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms are done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, 
so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. As I began to think about this sermon, uh, please be seated for those of you who are in the church. I forgot you actually have to tell people to sit down before you start to preach. That's how long it's been. <clears throat> As I began to think about this sermon, I had to remind myself, were we still able to worship in person on Ash Wednesday last year? Well, we were. The churches weren't beginning to close until around March 15th of last year. And last year, Ash Wednesday was on February 26th. The front page of the New York Times that day had the headline, it, quote, could be bad, unquote, viral crisis in U.S. is deemed likely. There were 15 reported COVID cases in the U.S. that day. On Monday, February 15th, when I began writing this sermon, there have been 28,291,581 COVID cases and 497,761 deaths in the U.S. Though amazingly, approximately two-thirds of those who have been infected from COVID have recovered. So yes, we were still worshiping in our churches last, last Ash Wednesday, but for the most part, we were completely unaware of the tsunami that was headed our way. So why start an Ash Wednesday sermon with a walk down COVID-19 memory lane? Because this Ash Wednesday is like none other that we have experienced in our lifetimes. Shortly after this sermon is concluded, you will hear me say the words, Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be, a, may be to us a sign of our mortality. This year, we may not feel like we need ashes to remind us of our mortality. The awareness of our mortality has been a constant companion for almost the past 12 months. So just what use is Ash Wednesday this year? Well, that actually has been a question that has been written about and talked about by clergy and church leaders quite a good deal over these past two weeks. So let's turn back to the words you're going to hear after this sermon because there is more to the sentence. See, it says, Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be, us, may be to us a sign of our, of our mortality and penitence, and a sign of our penitence. Well, Ash Wednesday is not meant as a day of condemnation. It is a day that compels us to realize our need to repent. In fact, there is an alternate, alternate phrase taken from the first chapter of Mark, verse 15, that may be spoken when ashes are imposed. It says, repent and believe in the gospel. 
We'll hear words similar to that during the absolution after the litany of penitence, when I'll speak the words, he pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere heart believe his holy gospel. So for what do we repent? Often we may think of the ways within our own immediate lives we have fallen short of living the gospel message. And the first half of the litany of penitence focuses on sins of that nature. But the second half of the litany is meant to shift our focus, to think more broadly, to remind us that even though Jesus lived, died, and was resurrected to redeem the world, this world is still a broken place. And we are part of that brokenness. And today is a day that is meant in part to remind us of that reality. And what is that reality? Well, it might be easy for us to forget that in this year of COVID, something else has been moving through this land of ours. And I know you have heard me preach on it many times, but I have to preach on it until I don't need to preach on it anymore. This year on 525, the number 80, 800, 846 became a part of our nation's story because on May 25th of 2020, police officer Derek Chauvin knelt on George Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds while he begged for mercy until he died. George Floyd was not the first person killed in America by a white authority figure, and he certainly hasn't been the last. Since 2014, the year Eric Gardner was choked to death on the pavement of, of New York City by police officers, to May 25th, 2020, it is estimated that almost 1,500 Black people have been shot and killed by police. This year, we have had to face two epidemics, one caused by a virus that kills indiscriminately, and the other that's caused by systematic racism and white supremacy that kills very, very specifically. Listen to the words God speaks to the prophet as recorded by the writer of Isaiah 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. As if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. Isaiah 58 goes on to say, look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. The hard and sorry fact is that if we are white and living in America, we have benefited even in our ignorance from the systematic racism and white supremacy that infects the soul of this country. None of us is free of this sin. We live in a broken world but we also live in a world that has been redeemed for God hates nothing God has made and God forgives the sins of all who are penitent. Again, in Isaiah 58, we are told what penitence looks like. Is not this the fast I choose? To loosen the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. This is the gift of Ash Wednesday and of Lent, but it's hard work. Through today's litany of penitence, we acknowledge our sins, but we are also granted absolution. And we are being led into a season of self-reflection where we are called to look at the world around us with eyes wide open, seeing where it and we 
have fallen short of living the gospel message. We will be walking the road to Jerusalem with Jesus. And Jesus is, will be walking with us on our road as we bear our own cross. Using the words of St. Paul, we are called to bear our cross with great endurance while we come to terms with our complicity for the afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, and hunger suffered by black people, people of color, and indigenous people in this country. But the good news, the good news is that we are called to bear our cross as members of a community brought together through worship and love. We have not been left to do this hard work by ourselves. We aren't meant to. So today, let our decision to wear ashes be a commitment to journey together through Lent as the family of St. Gabriel's, walking together with Jesus with honesty through sorrow and pain, learning as we go to use, again in the words of St. Paul, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God to use them to work to fulfill the gospel message and become the righteous of God. Amen. Turning to page 264 in the Book of Common Prayer, if you have it, or on page five of the service booklet, which we emailed out to you. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, have been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, to let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Now granted, kneeling in front of your webcam or your, your laptop may not actually be possible, but if you can't kneel actually, then I know that you can kneel in your hearts and minds. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence that we may be remember that this only that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior, Amen. And while I was blessing the ashes, I forgot to bless our own. Uh, so, if you received ashes in the mail, and I sincerely hope many of you did, um, we put in a letter that talked about how to use this year's ashes. So I'm gonna review that with you all one more time. Uh, normally ashes on Ash Wednesday are mixed with oil, which makes them heavier and stickier so that when they're put on your forehead, they stay. These ashes are just burnt palms. So they're not as sticky as one would like them to be. In fact, the ashes you receive might still have little clumps of uh, burnt ash that hasn't quite dissolved, hasn't quite broken down. So if you'd have that, Take your thumb, put it in, oh, first of all, I hope you dipped your ashes, dumped your ashes onto a plate or in a bowl, because otherwise this is gonna get really messy. So open up your little envelope of ashes, pour it onto the plate or bowl that you have, 
take your thumb. I know this sounds like remedial ashing, but take your thumb and just squeeze on those ashes to break up any of the clumps. And as you see, I also have some on my thumb. So we are asking you this year to impose the ashes on your, on your own forehead or sprinkle them on your head should you want to. Or if you are with a member of your family to impose them on each other as a way of committing yourselves not only to repentance but to walking together through this season of Lent as we draw closer to the understanding of Christ's passion and his redeeming love for the world. So we here at the church are all going to get our thumbs nice and ashy <laughs> and then we are going to impose them at the same time that we ask you to do this. my mask. And now, my dear friends in Christ, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, will you not despise. Now turning to page 267 in the Book of Common Prayer or to page six in the service booklet, we continue with the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us Lord. Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, us Lord. Lord. 
We confess to you, Lord, of our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess, we confess to you, you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that we may turn from our wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, my dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. <laughs> and uh, okay, poor David is now spotlit. Um, <laughs> Susan, are you able to spotlight me again? There I am. All right, <laughs> let, us, <laughs> let us continue with the great thanksgiving. <clears throat> Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name but to do good and to distribute, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased.
So that's not going to do us any good. There we go. Let's start again. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O heavenly, O wherefore, O Lord and heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits unto, procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy church may obtain remissions of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And, al and although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, 
yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now my friends, you are invited into a special time of communion as we open our hearts to the abundant grace of Jesus Christ in these times when we cannot be physically present to one another. We remember that Christ is always present to us, connecting us one to the other in the mystical body of Christ, which knows no bounds of space or time. And now, my friends, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. All right, Susan, can you end the recording?